So now we can talk about data validation. So why am I talking about this? Because when I started with Scala, it was really difficult. So my background is actually a Java background. So just to give you an idea, the gang of four was my best friend. And then I started doing Scala and all these people start talking about this crazy mathematical stuff that I don't really care about, I don't really understand. Why are they so passionate about it? It doesn't really make sense to me, right? It's just a lot of words that don't make any sense. So at the beginning, it was really difficult. And I know most of you guys feel the same pain. So because of that today, I'm going to show you that uh, we can talk about functional stuff without using any functional term. And you will get the idea, right? Hopefully, you will. So I will intentionally introduce you to some functional principle without using any fancy walls. So why are we going to talk about data validation? Because everyone has to do it. As soon as your service accepts some data, there's a really good chance that you will have to validate it. And there are two different types of validation, the one that I call the business validation and the one that I call the technical validation. The business validation is, is depending on the model of uh, your business. But the technical validation is, is a, can a user perform this operation? Does this idea exist? And so on and so forth. And it can become a mess really quickly. Um, so it's really important to uh, structure it in a way that it's easy to be maintained. Um, and again, it's something that everyone has to do. So don't reinvent the wheel. Someone else out there already solved the problem. So let's just reuse their stuff and we can have fun with things that are actually uh, fun. So I'm going to start reviewing really quickly the key uh, players of our game. We're going to play a little game called What's Wrong With My Code. Um, but I promise I'll go through the basic really quickly and then we can have some fun, yeah? All good? And then if you guys want to know the name of all the functional stuff that I'm not mentioning it, we can talk about it uh, later. Buy me a drink, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> okay, first thing, map. Map is this magic function. You probably have seen it. Uh, you have it through several classes, let's call them um, containers. Uh, so it's like having a box. You open it through the function map, and if you find something in your container, then you use the function to modify the content of your box. So in this case, we have some Daniela map, and then because some does contain a value, in this case it's Daniela, we can append a yo in front of the string. What happens if my container is empty? Nothing to do, right? Um, so this pattern is fairly common. So map is basically opening a container and see what's inside the container. But what if my function returns a container itself? Like for example, in this case where my function returns an option. What will happen is that I will have a sum of a sum of my string. That's pretty stupid, right? We don't want a value that maybe, maybe contains a value, right? So this is something fairly common uh, that happens quite a lot. So there is a function that is called flatten that basically will throw away one container. So instead of having a maybe, maybe a value, you will have a maybe a value. All good? Yes, and this is so common, they have combined these two into something that is called Flat map is literally just the same thing. A map, and then you flatten to throw away one container. And syntactic sugar in Scala, if you have a map and a flat map, you can write this cool syntax when you can just write things in a row, and you can have, you're basically concatenating all the containers together. So in the first example, we have sum of one, hey is gonna be one, then the second line, sum of five, b is going to be five, and then we contain both of them. What happens if 
one of the two values in my chain is none, well, the chain is going to break. So the whole thing is going to be none. OK, everyone with me so far? Yes, cool. OK, then let's have some fun, right? Let's write some code. See, I can do front end. People that say that I cannot do front end, they are lying. <laughs> OK, so I have this beautiful form that gets an email, a phone number, and I have to submit it, right? So let's, uh, let's start our journey. Obviously, Scala 2.11, uh, we just started. Uh, so we don't know that it's not the latest version. Uh, but it's fine, you know. Uh, we just started with Scala, so we're not the cool kids yet. So 2.11 will work for us. And we start with option. Option is what we saw before. It's just uh, a type that has either a sum of a value or a none. It's really similar to what you have in Java. And you have a map and a flat map. So you can look inside the container and you can concatenate containers together. So this is my beautiful implementation. I have a case class that is called data that has an email and a phone. Then I have two function validate email that takes a string and returns an option of a string. I have another function that is called validate phone that gets a, another string and return an option of a string. And then I have a validate data function that gets a case class and then combines the two options together. And if both the email and the phone are valid, it will return my case class. So my question now is, don't say everything, please. What's wrong with my code? OK, can anyone tell me by just, just looking at the re return type of the function, what's wrong? What was the problem that made the whole thing fail? This is obvious if we look at how we use the function. So the first line, we pass an OK email, OK phone. Fine, I get the data back. But if I pass both the fields wrong or one of the two wrong, by just looking at the output of the function, I don't know what was wrong. Was it the email? Was it the phone? Was it both? I have no clue. So basically, this is the same of using is it valid true? Is it valid false? Right? We haven't done anything more than that. So don't, right? If that is all you need, just use a Boolean, right? Because this is really upsetting when you have a function that is supposed to validate something and doesn't tell you a thing. Um, don't use options for validation. Option is great, not for validation, just don't. Um, so, you know, we go around and our cool friends that know Scala a little bit more, we're still in 2.11. And we think, OK, we, we could use either, right? Either it's a type in the Scala library that is either a left value or a right value. And the reasoning is either my data is going to be valid or my data is not going to be valid. I'm going to receive some kind of description of why it wasn't valid. And unfortunately, in Scala 2.11, we don't have a map. We don't have a flat map. It means that we cannot easily see what's inside our container. We cannot concatenate containers. But what we have instead is that you can decide on which side you want to map over. So you can say, OK, I'm going to map on, over the left side, or I'm going to map over the right side. It's a little bit weird, but it works. You have to decide which side you want to map on. And this is our solution. Again, same as before, case class, data, with an email and a phone, a function, validate email, that takes a string and returns an either of a list of strings or a string. Note, we return a list of strings because multiple things could be wrong about an email. Same about the phone and then um, our function the data that returns um, an either of a list of string and data. And then 
we kind of want to combine everything together. So we say, okay, let's uh, pattern match, right? We know how to pattern match. So we say, okay, if they're both right, we return a right containing the data. If they are both wrong, meaning left, uh, we return left and then we combine them together. And then if the first one is wrong, we just return the first one. If the second one is wrong, what's wrong with this code? It's sure, right? <laughs> it's not, it's, it's terrible. What happens if suddenly you have three fields to validate? You will have eight combinations. And what if you have four? And what if you have five? It's really not maintainable, right? You just go crazy trying to find all the possible combinations. It just doesn't work like that. Um, so this code works, but it's just terrible. It's terrible to read, terrible to maintain, so it's uh, not great. It works, right? This is the proof. So when we have both good, we get right of data, and we have both bad, we will get both the errors, but it's just not a code that we want to work with. Um, and again, why this is terrible is because it's really difficult to maintain, and also it's not clear which one is wrong, which one is correct, right? English helps a little bit, so most of the people would assume that right is the right way, but believe me, I've been telling you this for seven years, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> okay? So you will always have someone in the team that is saying, no, the left one is the right one. <laughs> so, things have changed in Scala 2.12, right? So our cool kids now are saying, hey, upgrade to Scala 2.12, because now things are a lot better. So uh, we already discussed this. Uh, Scala 2.12, right? Scala to 12, they realized that either needed to be biased. Bias just means that there is a default way of mapping over things. Uh, so basically, same as before, but now we have a map and a flat map. All they have done is that by default, they decide, they pick the right projection of the either. So by default, right is the right way. Um, same as before. Nothing new, and this is our code. So, case class data with an email and a phone. We have a function, validate email, that gets a string and return an either of a list of strings or a string. Same for phone, and then we have validate data that takes some data, and then it combines all the operations together with a full comprehension. By the way, this is called full comprehension. Okay, question. What's wrong with my code? Well, you get one error. So if we see at the, uh, at the um, result types, you see that it works if we have both OK. If we have one of the two that are bad, it works. But if we have both of them bad, it will just list one error. The way cool people describe this is with, it fails too fast. What does it mean? It means that it will go with the first one, the first one will fail, and then it will not evaluate the second one, right? And this is not exactly what we want to do, right? Um, so just to be clear, what this means is, again, my beautiful front-end skills here, we have a, a form, with three fields, right? And we know we put three bad values in it. And basically, our function is behaving exactly like this website. It's telling, okay, first field is wrong. Okay, I'm gonna change it, submit it again. Oh, now it's the second one that is wrong. Okay, change it again. Now it's the third one that is wrong. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't use a website that behaves like this. I would probably get crazy really quickly, right? So why would a function behave differently? Um, so basically what we really want, if I don't kill myself on stage, um, <laughs> is given this form, we want this behavior. We want the function to tell us everything that is wrong, all at once. 
because we have other things to do with our life and we want just to take all the actions and get on with it. Okay? So, either is not really suited for this task. And that's because by combining things with the full comprehension, we just um, stop as soon as we find one validation that is wrong. Um, so usually either can be used for this stuff, but not when you need to accumulate multiple errors. Okay. So we have seen a few things that the language offer, and we couldn't really uh, find the bit that really helps us in our problem. We could go ahead and reinvent the wheel, but we don't want to do that. We work in a startup where we have to be extremely productive and develop everything by tomorrow. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at what's out there. Um, one of the options is, for example, CAT. Um, um, if you guys are familiar uh, with CAT, um, um, Basically, what they have done is that they have added um, a few methods to make either better. Uh, if, you're, if you kind of remember, this was called XOR up to uh, CATS08. Uh, um, but let's have a look at what it means, right? Um, so in CATS, uh, we have this type that is called validated. Um, has a valid that can contain a value or an invalid that can contain another value. So that, that's promising, right? It's clear what's valid, what is not valid, right? The name itself would suggest that. So no more discussions around left or right. It's clear which one is the right one. Um, but we only have a map. So we can open the container, we can see inside the container, but we cannot concatenate containers together. In a way, that's good, right? Because we have seen that the full comprehension approach, the approach of putting all the operations in sequence, is, is not for us. What we have instead of a flat map is something that is really useful, and it's called apply. I will intentionally not go into the details of what it is, because otherwise I will break my promise. Um, but basically, what it does is that it runs all the operations. It doesn't stop as soon as one of them is failed. So instead of running all the operations in sequence, it runs them in parallel. Note, one line, right? Instead of multiple lines, how cool is that? <laughs> so that, that's a clear indication that it will run all the operations and then after all the operations are being executed, it will map the way we know it. What does it mean for our program? Well, same as before, case class, uh, data that contains an email and a phone. Um, then we have a function that is called validate email uh, that gets a string and returns a validated that returns either a list of errors or a string. Same for phone. And then, once we have to combine things together, we just have to do this little thing. That is equivalent to what we used to do with the pattern matching, with the difference that I, we don't have to figure out all the combinations. It does it by itself. Uh, if we have to add a validation, we just add another crazy symbol and variable. OK? Um, does my program work? Yeah, kind of does. Um, no trick there, it works. Um, if you see the output, you will see that if you pass two values that are okay, you will get the case cost back. If you pass both the values that are bad, you get both the errors, so it works. Okay, so this is a really, really good solution. Still, there are a few things that we can improve. And if one can think of anything that is not super great, poor fails. Uh, no, we can do that easily. 
one validate, right? Instead of having because they you validate in strain, but you have two methods to do that, the same thing. Well, the, the fields will be different, so actually the validation will be completely different. The problem, the problem with, well, it's not exactly a problem, it's just, is it possible to have an instance of invalid with an empty list? So basically what we are saying is, do this wrong, but I'm not telling you what the problem is. So we want to guarantee that when we return an invalid instance, we have at least one error, because otherwise we have done something wrong. And they already thought about that. Uh, it's called validated nil, where nil is, stands for not empty list. It will just guarantee that every time we return an invalid, we will tell you at least one reason why it was invalid. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Cool. The second thing that we could improve a little bit is that Returning an error has a string, it's fine, but as soon as you want to do something serious with it, a string is probably not enough. It would be cool to have something that is a little bit more structured, uh, so that maybe you can pattern match on it, uh, have some error codes. So one of the improvements that we could have is instead of returning a simple string as an explanation of the error is to have a case class. Is just one of the choices that you have there. Uh, one of the things that you could do is to have a case class that has a code that is an enum and then a human readable message. Uh, but you really can do whatever you want as long as your error is structured so that it can be understood both by humans and machines. Um, so this is our final solution. It looks Pretty nice, uh, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it works. Uh, so it's cool. Um, okay, so we, we spent a few minutes uh, talking about a really simple form uh, and talking about types, but how do we apply this in, in our applications, right? Our example was extremely simple. Um, how do we put these in production? So I'm gonna give you a little tips on how we solve this in production. So the first um, advice that I want to give you is to pick a representation of the error and stick to it, whatever it is. Just maintain it across the whole application. And the motivation for this is that you are gonna accumulate errors. And if you accumulate things that are different, it's going to be a mess. Don't. Just, just decide one representation of your error that is flexible enough and stick with it. Um, the second one is to enforce um, the same error type everywhere. One way of doing this is to use an alias so that you're sure that every time someone in your team writes a function that validates something, it will always return the error type that you expect. And the third step is to make it simple for your team. The reason why is to make it simple for your team is because if you try to enforce some rules and they're difficult to follow, guess what? Your team is not gonna follow them, right? Um, so, I work with people that have different backgrounds. I work with people that come from Python world, Ruby world. They're not really into um, functional stuff too much. They don't like symbols too much. It's fine, right? Decide how you want to instantiate your, uh, your types and just create a companion object for it so that everyone is happy to use it. Um, Simple uh, example that we use at work. This is our uh, representation of an error. We have a trait that defines what an error contains. And then we have several case classes that implement this trait. So because they all implement this, the same trait, it's easy to accumulate them. And each case class 
also defines the error code that our API will return. So we have this rule that if you have multiple errors and any of them is bad request, we will return a bad request code. Otherwise, we will return not found. Um, another thing that we did is that um, this is our DSL. So again, we don't like symbols. We don't like things that look too much like Scala. Um, so when we have to initialize things, we don't care about invalid nail. What the hell is valid nail? <laughs> um, so we just write validation.success and we pass the value or validation.failure and we pass the error. And then we don't really have to remember that it was a not empty list. We just use it. Um, and again, we don't like that crazy symbol over there. Some people call it the cinnamon symbol. I'm Italian, so I'm going to go for the pizza symbol. Um, so we uh, just change it with accumulate. Um, and that's it, really. Um, so the summary really quickly is, and then we can go for the pizza, um, is don't reinvent the wheel. If you have a problem, have a look around. There is probably someone else that has already fixed the problem. Um, um, try to spend some time reasoning about your types. Choosing the right type it will probably solve half of the battle. So think about which types you are going to use. And obviously, be aware of your teammates. So try to, so, to select to choose a solution that works for everybody in your team. Uh, if your team is comfortable with crazy symbols, that's great. But if, if you guys are not, then there's no, we, you can just hide it behind some functions. Um, so thank you, that was me. The best way of learning is just to go and try things out. So if you guys wanna review all the code that I showed you tonight, that's the GitHub repo uh, to look at. My advice, download it, change it, convince yourself why it works or why it doesn't work. Um, if you guys want to follow me, ask some questions, I'm going to be around, but that's my Twitter handle and my blog. Thank you very much.